everybody, I'm Tom Basso. Welcome to Kickstarter Look Back. This is where I take a look at Kickstarters uh, that we've backed here at the Dice Tower and we look and see where they are today. Did they come out? What do we think of them? So let's get started. And we're going to start with The Specialists. Now you may not have heard of The Specialists. This one did pretty decently, but I haven't seen a lot of people talk about this one and it's a pretty fun game. It has that whole Ocean's Eleven vibe and you're going around and you're organizing a crew, so you're drafting these little cards, and then you're going to send them out to rob these different casinos and different spots around the world and collecting equipment. It's The artwork is fun. The whole thing has kind of a silly, fun feel to it, and I really enjoy this one. I've kept it in the Dice Tower Library because I think it's a pretty fun game. So um, this was, to me, this is a rousing success, and huzzah! But not everything is great. Rule Benders. This is from Game Brewers. So Rule Benders here looks pretty neat. And this one did about the same as the last one. And there's some neat miniatures here. And what Rule Benders is, is it is a game in which the rules are going to change. The number of cards you have in your hand, the number of, you know, whatever. There's like six different rules. There's the, that round board there shows you all the different rules. And you're going to be changing them as the game goes by. You also play with different decks, like see these themes. There's Arabian Nights, and Fantasy, and Prehistoric, and Sci-Fi, and Pirates, and Zombies. And you, so you put these decks together, you're drawing cards from various decks, and you play. And it's insanely, insanely bad. Like, horrifically bad. I, I, the rule, it's crazy chaotic. There are cards that are clearly better than other cards. You're getting points wildly. It's random as all get out. And I have not disliked the game as much as I dislike this one in a while. Aqua Garden. All right. Well, Aqua Garden, this one here, uh, this company has really, really um, been hitting it well. I mean, this one has 4,000 backers. And then their latest game has done well. And they won on Kickstarter just a few weeks ago. But this is such a beautiful game. These fish here, you're building an aquarium. I mean, look at these fish, the clownfish, the turtles, the sharks, the seahorses, whale sharks. And then they added all kinds of special fish that different things that can happen. And for 45 bucks, I thought that was a pretty good deal. Um, I like this one. Now, this little Arctic game that they added was okay and stuff, but it just has a neat feel as you're trying to fill the aquariums the right size and drafting. I really enjoyed this one, and it's super pretty. So, uh, good. Then we have the Transcontinental. So this one, this one initially attracted me because it has this really long board and I like the idea, the theme really strong about building this Transcontinental Railroad. And this railroad is going to move up the line and then down the line. And as it moves up and down, different buildings activate. You are placing workers on each side of the track or not on each side of the track. You place it in the, on the track. When the train hits it, you can use one of the things on each side. You build buildings. It's just too long. That was my biggest problem with it. I really liked the way the game looks. I mean, it looks really pretty, but there's a lot of rules. There's a lot going on, and the train moves slowly up and slowly back and slowly up, and there's some neat concepts there. I just think it could have been streamlined just a little more. Vindication Board Game and Chronicles expansion. I love Vindication, and it's such, such a terrific game. And then all this stuff I haven't messed with yet. As much as I love Vindication, I just haven't got to this. So I want to play with some of this extra stuff that's come in this expansion. And I've gotten it recently, so this will happen. Upgrade Your Games Season 2. Uh, this one here had some neat components. Now, I got some of this stuff in, and I was not as impressed with it as I thought I would be. Um... Six non-metal resource packs and two metal resource packs is what I bagged. The hammers are neat, but how often do you need them in games? I mean, Cold Stone would use in games all the time. Not many games are going to use swords. They just don't. Barrels and stuff. This stuff is neat. It's not as good as I'd wanted it to be. CMOD presents the animation collection. So this is a weird project because they have Scooby-Doo the board game, and then they have the Mayhem games, Teen Titans Go and Looney Tunes, which are the exact same game and can be combined with each other. And it's weird that they mix these together. So this is a Seamon game that's extremely light. All the characters are pre-painted or pre-injection molding or whatever. And, and they look really good. 
I like the Scooby-Doo board game. It's a very light cooperative game. Think along the lines of, you know, Forbidden Desert, Forbidden Island. And so then that's, it has his, if you, if you got the Kickstarter version, it comes with the van and these painted figures. I really like that. Different monsters you fight. This one is a lot of fun. The other ones I found it to be too chaotic and not interesting enough. Um, I like the idea of Looney Tunes and Teen Titans. And if you think about it, Teen Titans Go is the Looney Tunes of more modern Looney Tunes. They really kind of act the same. So them working together, but just you have these special abilities and you could use an ability and move and every once in a while you hit the other person. It just did not turn out well. I like, um, I like you know, back and forth skirmish games, but this one itself was not fantastic. Darwin's Journey. Um, this one just came out this year, a big giant Euro game. This one is considerably late, November 2021, and it showed up closer to like June 2023. But it is a fantastic game. Um, a lot going on. These designers, there's so much in here. It is definitely one, though, that if you get the expansion, play with the expansion. I cannot emphasize this enough that expansion changes the game so much. I enjoy the original game. I love the expansion. It is a lot of fun. So um, it's kind of, they're showing all this theme. It's kind of a themeless game, but there's tracks upon tracks upon tracks. So the Fireland expansion, this is the one right here. This is the one you want to get. Then we have Castle Mad King Ludwig Collector's Edition. Now this did really well, made 1.5 million. Now I'll tell you what I did not back on this one, and that's the Colossal things. This game barely fits on a table as is. Why do I want giant tiles? Does anyone actually play with the Colossal stuff? But, but wow, this is such a night and day difference. So if you say, Tom, what do you like to play, Suburbia or Castle Mad King Ludwig? It's Suburbia. I like Castle Mad King Ludwig, but Suburbia is amazing. But when it comes to these collector's editions, it is completely the opposite. Because Suburbia, the collector's edition, is such a pain to open up and figure out where everything is. And Castle Mad King Ludwig you open it up and you can pull everything out. You can play with everything almost in the box. These trays are a little ugly, these green trays, but they work really well. And it was just so easy to get this to the table and play. Like here's the standard tile and then the colossal tile. That's so big. That colossal tile is this big. I'm putting that in front of me and building several rooms. My castle's gonna be this big, yours is gonna be this big. And then we have to put the rest of this up. I don't get it. I haven't even seen people playing the colossal one, but still. This campaign and everything, this is fantastic. I really do like how everything looks in this campaign, and this is one I can pull out and play now. Epic Seven Arise, the board game. This is from Farside Games, and here in the States, it was picked up by uh, Japanime Games. So this one did pretty well. And you know, honestly, when I looked at it, I thought it looked interesting, I backed it. I didn't look as closely as I should have, I suppose. Because when we looked at the artwork and the cover, we just weren't interested anymore. Um, the It's just incredibly teenage, voyeuristic stuff. And I'm just not interested in, in playing games of that kind of artwork anymore. It just it doesn't work for me. So maybe you all will like this stuff more. Maybe some people do. But I, I, I wasn't even interested in playing a game after seeing that. No one here was. Primal the Awakening is the last game we're looking at today, and it's the only game here that has not yet delivered, as far as I can tell. It's a big box here. Who's the publisher of this one? Reggie Games. What else has Reggie Games done? They've done three games. Are they all Primals? Elo Darkness. I haven't seen that one. All right. Well, Primal, big giant king of monsters stuff, big boss battle fights. Maybe it's fantastic, maybe it's not. I backed it because we wanted to review it and play it on the Dice Tower. So it looks interesting. I mean, the stuff is, you know, giant weapons, huge dragon monsters. I don't know what about this makes it unique, but I'm willing to try it, well, whenever it comes out anyway. So I'm assuming this one will come out at some point. These miniatures do look pretty neat. But they also look like, this is a kind of game like, does the miniature matter? If you're just gonna plop the miniature down in the middle of the table, and then we use weapons and stuff to fight it. That sounds fun and everything, but does the miniature matter? Or you just, could I keep using the same miniature with different stats and stuff? I don't know. Anyway, folks, there you go. That is uh, 12 more Kickstarter projects. What do you think? 
Which of these projects did you like the best or thought was most interesting? Which of these have I missed the mark on? Um, I, uh, my favorite of all the projects today, I, I guess it would be Darwin's Journey, probably. Anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. This has been Kickstarter Look Back on the Dice Tower.